This video is on section 148 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course, and it covers the two impersonal verbs day and cray. Hansen and Quinn has them on pages 565 to 567. These two verbs, de, deese, and edeese, which means it is necessary, must, or there is need, and cray, kreistai, which means ought or must, are called impersonal verbs. You will notice that their principal parts are only in the third person singular. They have no other person's numbers. Their subject is always it. So this is what we call impersonal. They don't have regular person and number. It's only third person singular, and it's not attached to subjects in the way that you would normally think. So that means that when we learn how to conjugate them, really we're only doing third person singular in the moods and the tenses. So I'm going to show you first how to form these two verbs in the moods and the tenses in which they appear, and then we'll talk about how to use them. So for day, what we're looking at is really a stem da, which occasionally contracts with its ending but a lot of the time does not. So the present indicative active has it contracting and we get day. The imperfect does as well and we get ede. But the present subjunctive doesn't have it contract and we have de. Neither does it with the optative ending and so we have deoi. The present infinitive contracts and we get dane. The present participle does not. Now participles for these two verbs only appear in the neuter. So here we have the neuter nominative singular de on. And then de does have a future, de ese, and it has an aorist, a de ese, with a new movable. So cray is a little bit different. Cray is actually an indeclinable noun, cray, that combines in most of the tenses and moods with a form of amy I am or amy sum. And let me show you what that ends up looking like. So our present indicative is just that indeclinable noun, cray. And we're going to understand the verb to be with it. The imperfect crane combines cray and ain, and sometimes you'll actually see it with an augment. You'll get both things. Cray is the subjunctive, which is cray and a. Cray a looks nice and optative for cray plus a a. The infinitive is crani, which is a smash up of cray and a ni. Creon is our neuter nominative singular participle from cray and on with a little quantitative metathesis. And then there is the future kreistai, which is kray smashed up with esti, the future third person singular of a me. Kray doesn't exhibit an aorist. So what do we do with these two verbs? Well, we're going to use them with infinitives. Let me give you some examples. De hemas tuta poiesai. So there we have de, it is necessary. And then we have hemas as a subject of our infinitive and the accusative, which is the normal thing. And then we have our infinitive and a direct object. And that ends up meaning it is necessary or there is need for us, hemas, to do this. Or you could put that into more colloquial English and say, we must do this. Similarly, with cre hemas tuta poiesai. So you could think of that as it ought to be for us to do this, but that's really awkward English. And you might as well just translate, we ought to do this, or we must do this. So when you see a cre, a form of cre, look for the accusative that is the subject of the infinitive and have it be the subject of ought or must. If you have a negative with these two verbs, what you usually mean is must not. So ude hemas tuta poiesai or ukre hemas tuta poiesai both mean we must not do this. 
but depending on your context and your style of English, u de hemas tuta poiesai could also mean there is no need for us to do this. So the verb de has in it the idea of something lacking, that there's a need of something. And so with a negative, that could mean there is no need for us to do this. That same thing is at work with de when you see it with a genitive of separation. Because there's something lacking, you need it. And that's why what you need is in the genitive case, because you're separated from it. So for instance, de heimin sofrosunes. There is need for us, with a dative of advantage, of sofrosune in the genitive, of prudence, of moderation. There is need for us of moderation, or perhaps in easier English, we have need of moderation. You'll also see this genitive of separation in polu de and other expressions like it, there is need of much, or perhaps much is missing, or much is lacking. The participle of de, de on, de on tas, means in its adjective way, needed or necessary. So you'll see it used substantively. So ae poyumen ta de on ta means we always do the things necessary, or perhaps even we always do the needful things. The things you must do, ta da on ta. So that's a little introduction to the impersonal verbs de and cre, which are quite common, and now you'll know how to handle them when you run into them.